So this is probably the toughest section of the whole unit, empirical and molecular formulas. And to be honest, it's not really that difficult. It just is tedious and requires a lot of steps. So let's, of course, go through some background information first. First of all, what you need to know about empirical formulas are empirical formulas are the smallest whole number ratio of atoms in a molecule. Okay, so for example, oops, for example, sodium chloride, H2O, C12H22O11. Notice that the subscripts in the formula cannot be reduced down any farther than they already are. They're in the smallest whole number ratio that they're supposed to be. Now, here's the thing about the empirical formula is many times they are the actual formula for the compound, like all three that I, examples I gave you. Uh, sodium chloride is table salt, water, C12H22 is sucrose. All of them are the actual formula for the compound, but sometimes they're not. Sometimes you end up with situations where you have what is called, uh, so I'm sorry, where something can be reduced. So for example, CH2O is an empirical formula, but C6H1206 is not the smallest whole number ratio for things in that particular atom and that particular molecule, because those things can be, 6, 12, and 6 can all be divided by 6 to form CH2O. When you have something that still can be reduced, that's what's called a molecular formula. And molecular formulas are the actual formula for the compound. So in this guy, again, this is your molecular formula. This is your empirical formula. So now let's see this in action. You're like, okay, great. That's, that's all great in theory, Mr. Siegel, but how are we going to use this? Well, let's actually do some calculations. So it says, the de determine the empirical formula of the compound with the following composition by mass. 10.4% carbon, 27.8% sulfur, and 61.7% ah, chlorine. Now here's the thing about these numbers. You're like, why are they giving me percentages? Well, here's how this works. What they do is somewhere they have a container. And in that container is some amount of this stuff. Okay, And they did a chemical analysis on it. And they found that 10.4% of it is carbon, 61.7% is chlorine, and 27.8% of it is sulfur atoms. And that's by mass. <coughs> Now, by mass is telling you by grams, so that my sample is 10.4% of grams of carbon. Now, does it tell me how much I totally have in my sample? No, it doesn't. So let's assume we have 100 grams. Why am I going to assume that I have 100 grams? Well, if I assume that I have 100 grams, that means 10.4 grams are carbon, and 27.8 grams are sulfur, and 61.7 grams are chlorine. See, us making those small assumptions will not only be beneficial to us later, but also it helps make the problem easier on us because I don't have to deal with weird numbers. Now, had they said to me my sample was 252 grams and 10.4% is carbon, then yeah, I'd have to do some sort of mathematical conversion. <coughs> But since they don't tell me what it is, I am going to assume 100 to make my life easier. So I've got grams. Can I compare things in grams? No, I can't, because I don't know how much stuff is actually there. Remember, this is the smallest whole number ratio of atoms in a molecule. Atoms are physical things, like individual numbers of stuff, not grams. It's sort of like you've heard that old saying, like, what weighs more, a pound of bricks or a pound of feathers? Well, I'm not. that's if I wanted to do it in weight, which would be grams. But I don't. I want an actual number because I want to compare them. So I'd have to say which weighs more, 100 bricks or 100 feathers, because I need the actual number of each of them to match up. So the only thing that we use where it's actual numbers is moles. So once again, when in doubt, mole it out. Good, pretty much good principle from here on out for the rest of the year. If you're not sure what to do first, convert all your grams to moles. You, you can't really go wrong. So let's convert this. Now I'm going to write everything out first. And I'm going to do that so that I don't have to touch my calculator yet. Because the more times I touch my calculator, the slower my 
problem gets solved. So now that I've got my numbers all written out, I'm going to jump to my calculator and I'm going to start calculating away. So I've got 10.4 divided by 12.01. I've got 27.8 divided by 32.07. Oops. And I've got 61.7 divided by 35.45. 1.77. Okay, so you're going to help me remember these, right? So 0 0.866, 0 0.867, and 1.74. 0.866 moles of carbon, 0.867 moles of sulfur, and what was the other one? Oh, thank you so much. 1.74 moles of chlorine. And you're like, wait a second, Mr. Siegel, All right, who's talking to you right now? No, it's like Mickey Mouse Clubhouse and Sesame Street. You know how they talk to the TV screen and they expect you the answer? I'm doing the same thing for you guys. Okay, sorry. it's I'm strange. So here we go. Let's go into this. Um, now, I've got these. Now, are they whole numbers? No, they're not whole numbers. And I can, certainly can't do like carbon 0.866 and sulfur 0.867 in my formula. I've got to get a whole number ratio. Now, remember, a ratio is a comparison. It's basically div division of one versus something else. So what I want to do is I want to divide. And I want to divide so that I end up with whole numbers all the way through. And the best way to do that is find the smallest one and divide by the smallest one. And when I divide by the smallest one, I get 1, 1, and 2. So my formula is CSCL2. Just like that. Now, what I'm going to do in this podcast is I want to keep this podcast focused. So if you want to see more examples of this, jump to the last podcast in this playlist, and it'll show you nothing but examples of empirical molecular formula calculations. So now I want to jump to a molecular formula. So now that we're on a molecular formula problem, you're going to be like, okay, well, what's the difference? Well, here's the thing. Molecular formulas are typically bigger whole number ratios than the empirical formula is. And molecular formula, I'm sorry, uh, molecular formulas can be reduced down to empirical formulas. So there's a certain number of empirical formulas that can fit into a molecular formula. So let's assume that I've done one of those percent composition problems, and I've come up with an empirical formula of CH. So what I do when I have this is I go to my periodic table and I add, find the weights of carbon and hydrogen. And I add them up. So this is the mass of CH. But they're telling me the actual mass is 78. So what I do is I take 78 and I divide by 13.02. Now, you may need to pull out your calculator and do this, but this is simple math that I can do in my head. So when I take 78 and I divide by 13.02 in my head, I get almost 6. It comes out to like 5.999 kind of thing. So that's 6. So what that tells me is there are six empirical formulas that can fit in one molecular formula. That means that this molecular formula is C6H6. So basically all I do is I take the six and I multiply it to whatever's in the formula. So it could be C1H1 becomes C6H6. If this was like C2H4, then my thing would come C12H24. Like I just multiply it all the way through. And that's how easy it is to take an empirical formula and turn it into a molecular formula.